Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these joiner's mallet or woodworking mallets. Stick around and watch and see how you can win one of these. For these mallets I'm just using some old scraps. Uh, this is a piece of paduke and I've got some walnut and uh, maple. So maple is going to be the cores and the piece of walnut and this paduke is going to be uh, the handle and the the faces. So the rough dimensions for these are that you know they're going to be around 13 inches tall, something like that, um, and they are going to be about uh, six inches wide. And the and the mallet head itself is about three inches tall. larger pieces, uh, the, the paduke and the walnut, I'm able to break it down and get enough for the handle and get enough for the, the, the faces. Here I'm just bringing the, the handle material down to the rough size that I want to start with. I'm shooting for about an eighth of an inch um, shoulder here. Uh, I'm going to be just making a, a relief cut around it uh, right at the beginning, and then I'm going to break out the dado stack. And you know, if you don't have a dado stack, you could do it with just a single saw blade here. You know, just take multiple cuts. prevents this from snapping or cracking when I drive in the wedge later.
since this Paduke is such an oily wood, I decided to go with some 5-minute epoxy versus wood glue. I just thought that maybe the, the epoxy would uh, penetrate through some of the oils of the wood, even though I did clean it with acetone first. Don't make too much fun of me for these nails uh, not going through too well. I just got this nail gun and I'm still uh, trying to get the hang of it. There's no hard and fast rule for you know the shape of your hand. You just want something that's going to fit comfortable in your hand. I looked at several pictures on the internet to, to come up with a design, and all I did was just put some layout lines on the piece here, and then I used a flexible ruler. And with the help of an assistant, or if you're you're very coordinated, you can just bend that ruler and make your your mark here. And I did that on all four sides. Um, the side, the long side, I did uh, make it a little bit wider and that was just so that it indexes in your hand very well. This was my first time using the spoke shave and uh, it, it was a little bit getting used to it, but I, I did finally get it. Um, you know, you can use a spoke shave or rasp, uh, sandpaper, you know, just use whatever it is that you, you have on hand to, to get this handle shaped the way that you want it. I found this was the best way for me to hold this uh, handle down on my workbench here. You know, use whatever you've got on hand, um, you know, to make it um, work. If you've got a vise, you know, whatever it is, uh, just so that it's, you know, you're comfortable and you're safe with whatever tools you're using. So now that I've got it shaped um, roughly where I want it, uh, I still got some bandsaw marks in here. I'm going to just start sanding. I started sanding with 80 grit and took it all the way up to uh, 240 grit. Uh, There's really no need to go any higher.
So I'm going to be using a five degree angle to, to cut my mallet faces with. Um, you can use whatever angle. I, I have heard some people using three degrees. You know, use whatever you know is you feel comfortable for you. Uh, I don't think there's any hard and fast rule for it. If there is, let me know down in the comments. Just putting a, uh, a light chamfer on here. I start with the end grain uh, because if there is any blowout, it allows me to clean it up when I go the uh, the lengthwise down and/or the, the long grain. I actually didn't have to cut any wedges for this. I, I found this in uh, my scrap bin, and all I had to do was take it to the disc sander to, to put the angle on it. Worked out perfectly. Be careful when you uh, pound in this uh, this wedge. Um, I did it a little too far, and it actually um, cracked one of the pieces on me. Um, I, you, I think I fixed it with some super glue, but it, it did crack. Um, so just be careful when you're you're putting those wedges in, and don't go too far. So before I apply my finish, which is uh, uh, the Odie's oil, you can you can really use anything. I just I like the way the Odie's oil goes on. I like the way it smells. But you know you could use uh, boiled linseed oil, mineral oil. You know just about any finish that you could think of. But um, whatever it is, if you're using some of these oilier woods, is that a word? But <laughs> these woods that are a little bit more oily. Um, like this Paduk, you know, it's a good idea to clean it with some acetone to get that surface uh, oil off so that you have a better chance of getting whatever finish you want on there. If you'd like to win one of these mallets, just drop a comment down below uh, and say hammer time and tell me which one of these you want, either the Paduk or the Walnut, and uh, I'll send it out to you free of charge. 
uh, just my way of saying thank you for watching. Um, and if you're new to the channel, uh, thank you for, for coming on. I'd encourage you, if you like what you see, to, to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell so that you're notified when I upload new videos. Uh, drop a comment down below. Uh, give it a thumbs up. All those great things help me out uh, on the channel. And uh, until next time, I wish you and your family a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you.